Um, this is from Jay Weisler. Uh, how do you feel about preferential parking? If you favor uh, residents' preferences, how would you solve the resulting limitations on parking for businesses along Ventura Boulevard? And I also just want to kind of piggyback the other one from Hal Landau. Uh, he's heard that uh, parking meters on Ventura Boulevard would go up to $4 an hour. Can we make it one minute? Can we get one minute for this one? No, 30 seconds and then uh, closings. Four minute parking meters. There's a term for it. Nishkugadach. It's not happening. We have to turn that back around. It's killing business and we can't do that. Um, Sorry, what's the first part? Preferential parking. Preferential parking. Where it's needed, it needs to be there. I met with a man a couple of weeks ago, a couple of blocks from here, who actually told me he was thinking of getting violent because of a local restaurant on Ventura Boulevard that's violating the parking uh, rules on his street. And I do not I do not blame him. Not that they should get violent, but... No, it's not. Um, but we need, to do, we need to enforce preferential parking. Thank you. Parking. Thank you. In 1986, I actually got preferential parking when the West Side Pavilion was uh, built in my neighborhood. And uh, I strongly support preferential parking. Here's the problem. The city failed to build the infrastructure on our main boulevards by building parking structures that would have generated quarters, dimes, and nickels, a ton of revenue for good services. So at the end of the day, we have to start focusing on the infrastructure, build a public parking, but we have to protect permit parking. If the neighborhood is being um, bombarded with the businesses, the patrons, the frequent the businesses, and the workers that work there, and so they come home and there is no parking, and they want preferential parking, I absolutely would be in support of that. I live uh, near a major boulevard, and I know what that's like to have cars come onto your street, and then you can't have visitors, or you, you yourself can't park in front of your house. So I absolutely would support neighborhoods um, organizing and moving toward the permanent parking. Paul? Well, I created a Neighborhood Watch Residents Association in my local area, which was just south of the Sunset Strip. And I led the effort to create a giant permit parking district. It was desperately needed to mitigate the problems of the nightclubs, and it solved all our crime and other problems. I also helped to get shared parking agreements with businesses. You've got to do that if you have permit parking. You've got to help find parking for the customers, and I helped build parking structures. Those are the three things that you need to do to protect the residents and at the same time thank you very much. Business. Adina? Quickly, the parking rates are too high and we need to stop trying to raise taxes on all of you and on, on ourselves when we aren't actually managing the money we have to begin with. So that is it's absolutely wrong. Second, we have to protect preferential parking districts, but at the same time, as Ty was talking about, we do need to find ways to have parking for our small businesses because you can all see what's happening. Our business corridors are emptying out, empty storefronts everywhere, and we can't allow that to happen if we want to have vibrant communities. Thank you. Unlike Los Angeles, uh, Beverly Hills, Santa Monica, Culver City, these cities actually build municipal parking, which provides parking for all of those patrons and results in lots of sales tax money that we're missing out on. So the fact that we are not providing enough parking or entering into public-private partnerships is costing us dearly. There's very much an important role for preferential parking, for keeping the sanity of the residents who live nearby, and at the same time, we've got to provide more parking for our businesses. Thank you, okay. Uh